talking athletes and film stars and 98% of men just do not get here. So I'm going to go through six things that you need to be aware of to get to 15%. What's going on YouTube is Jason and welcome to part two of how to get to 15% body fat. In the first video, we covered how to go from 25 to 20% body fat. And I always say to my clients, most people will get to 20% without too much hassle, just doing the basics. But to go from 20 to 15%, the basics are not enough. You need to be a bit more clever about how you navigate around the obstacles that will inevitably present themselves. If you think 15% body fat is athletic, we're talking athletes and film stars, and 98% of men just do not get here. So I'm gonna go through six things that you need to be aware of to get to 15%. I'm making the assumption that you've either never been to 15% body fat before, or you've been there briefly, but you're looking to return there. So point number one concerns calories and macros. I mentioned in the first video that in order to calculate your maintenance calories, you need to do a total daily energy expenditure calculator or a TDEE calculator. That should spit out a maintenance number based on your activity and your weight and all those things. And then you need to take 10 to 20% off that number in order to create a daily calorie goal and put you in a deficit. That will be enough for most people, depending on your starting point, to get you to 20% body fat, but will not be enough to get you to 15%. Because at some point, your metabolism is going to adjust to your new lower body weight. And so you are going to be burning less calories at rest. And so this is why I tell clients that you need to review and adjust. Every seven days, you need to be weighing yourself, measuring your waist, and if possible, taking photos. And if you're losing an appropriate amount of weight, let's say, 0.3 to 0.7, 0.8 kilos, then keep going. What you've done in the week is working. But if you encounter resistance, if you don't lose any weight in one week or nothing on your waist, and then the next week is the same, if the numbers are right and you're doing the right things, it may be that your metabolism is adjusted. And so you may need to either drop your calories or up your steps to continue losing body fat. This is where most people go wrong. If you do not change something at this stage, either with your activity or your nutrition, you will continue to see the same results week after week. And in most cases, you will lose motivation and eventually give up. Yes, you can recomp, you can lose a pound of fat and gain a pound of muscle, and the net result on the scale would be zero, but if you are truly doing that, your waist measurement will be going down, right? Because if you're losing fat, your body fat percentage will drop, therefore your waist measurement will drop. If your weight isn't changing and your waist isn't changing week after week, then in 99% of cases, you are at maintenance and you are not losing body fat. Point number two under this heading concerns macros. As I always say to clients, calories in versus calories out determines whether you gain or lose weight and macros or macronutrients, proteins, fats and carbs, determine what you gain and what you lose. So this is your body composition or muscle to fat ratio. Eating in a deficit but not getting enough protein will produce a very different look to a high protein diet in a deficit. So here I have some protein sources to elaborate my point. This is the most important macronutrient of all. And you need to be getting a minimum of 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight up to 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. Once you've calculated your protein intake, you can fill in the rest of your calories with carbs and fats according to your preference, provided your fats aren't too low. And so I recommend at least 10 to 15% of your calories coming from fats, and this is gonna help you maintain a healthy hormone environment. Point number two, I will not labor this point, but your training intensity has to be high you still have to train as though you were trying to build muscle. Now I know this is gonna be more difficult because your calories are down and your energy is gonna be down as well, but if you start doing this whole low intensity, light weights thing, you didn't build muscle that way, you're not gonna keep it that way either. And so every two to three weeks, your performance in the weight room has to improve. So either the number of reps has to increase or the weights that you're lifting have to increase. Point number three concerns sleep. Now we know the generic guidance that you need to get eight hours of sleep per night. 
It's more like seven to nine hours in terms of optimum for each individual, but getting enough sleep becomes more important when you talk about getting to 15% body fat. And that's because as you get leaner, your biggest risk is actually muscle loss. And there are three things that sleep helps to solve. Number one, in terms of muscle loss, if you are not sleeping enough, you are more likely to go into what's called a catabolic state and lose muscle. Because don't forget, you are in a calorie deficit and you are producing more stress in the body. Number two, when it comes to regulating your hormones, sleep helps to do that. And hunger, people forget, is regulated by a hormone called ghrelin. So if you're not sleeping enough, you may feel more hungry than normal, which when you're trying to get lean, is literally going to like bite you in the bum and counteract all your efforts when you're trying to maintain a calorie deficit. And number three is your energy, your ability to actually stick to your caloric amount and actually train hard in the gym, which is going to be very important for muscle preservation, will be impacted if you haven't got enough energy. So yeah, sleep is essential when it comes to getting lean. Point number four concerns steps. Again, I will not labor this point, but in my experience, the people that I know that are 15% and less don't move less than like 12,000 steps a day. That's not a hard and fast rule. I'm not saying you have to hit that. You can get to 15% body fat on less steps, but it does put a lot more pressure on your nutrition. And most people are not built like that to be super strict and eat like a monk 24 seven. So yeah, you need to move. And in most cases, your step count has to be step counting. Point number five concerns your mindset. And I don't wanna mince my words here because this is one of the main reasons most people will never make it to 15%. But if you are going to get to 15% body fat, you have to stop thinking like a fat person. I mean that with the most respect. I know some people might get triggered, but you're not gonna be thinking the same way as you did at 30% body fat. Same habits, same behaviors, same attitudes do one or two different things and just get to 15. It's not going to happen. You're gonna to have to get rid of that shortcut mentality, how fast can I get down here, or any quick hacks or cheat codes for getting leaner. That will work up to 20%, as I said, but will fail you beyond 20%. You need to develop and take on a new identity. Point number one that you must address if you want to get to 15% body fat is moderation. Most people have the mentality, especially when they go out, that they need to let their hair down, you only live once, and they go for this kind of all or nothing mentality where they consume thousands of calories and drink liters of alcohol. That is going to make it very difficult for you to get to 15% body fat because in order to work within your numbers, you are going to have to peel back your calories so far on another day in order to compensate for that that it's going to make it unsustainable. So instead, you're going to have to apply moderation. So that doesn't mean that you have to eliminate foods or not enjoy yourself, but you have to teach yourself when to say enough. And that brings me on to my second mindset principle, and that is calorie budgeting. The ability to make sure that over seven days, your calories fall within a certain range so that you can lose body fat week to week, or at least most weeks. This is where most people fall down. They are good in the week, they go mental at the weekends, and their seven day averages takes them out of a deficit in most cases, so they don't lose body fat. As I said, when you don't see results, there's only so long you can keep something going. You are going to have to be consistent with peeling back where necessary, so for argument's sake, if I was going out on Friday and Saturday, I'm going to have to make sure that Monday to Thursday and Sunday is low enough with my calories that I can balance out over seven days. Or when I go out, rather than going 10 out of 10 with indulgence, maybe I'll go eight out of 10 on one night, six on the other, or maybe both nights I'll go like seven out of 10. The numbers have to stack up over the week if you are going to get to 15% body fat. You need to make it fit around your lifestyle, but you have to get good at calorie budgeting. And the final mindset principle concerns patience and time. And this is where the men get separated from the boys. You can crash diet your way down to 20% body fat pretty easily. Intermittent fasting, keto or something like that, yeah, you'll get to 20%. To get beyond 20%, 
you need more. Like you need to accept that you can't crash diet your way down there because it will be too stressful for the body and you're more likely to rebound. I always give the recommendation that if you're trying to get to 15% body fat, you want to be losing maximum 1% a week, but for most people, somewhere between 0.5% and 0.7% of your body weight per week. You want to take it slow. The body's already going to be under a lot of pressure. You don't want to pile it under more pressure by aggressive calorie deficits or a crazy amount of activity. And so you just have to accept that for most people, getting to 15% body fat, even if your starting point is 25%, is going to be at least five to six months long. Now that's not popular. Someone's gonna say, oh, can't I just lose 1% body fat per week? In theory, yes, but in the real world, in over 10 years as a coach, having trained hundreds of clients and trained myself for the past two decades, it's not that straightforward for most people, especially if it's your first time. So leave room for the fact that it's gonna take at least five to six months for you to get there. A lot of people will take longer. Point number six, and the final point that you need to be aware of when getting to 15% body fat is hunger management. Now, a lot of people don't discuss this when getting lean. They give you all the training and nutrition hacks, but you have to accept you are going down to very lean levels of body fat, leaner than most men, as I said, you are going to feel more hungry than normal, probably like 20 to 30% more. Now, there are things you can do to manage hunger, like with water, for example, drinking north of two liters of water, making sure that you drink water before mealtimes helps, eating more fiber helps, obviously getting more sleep helps regulate your hormones, but you can do all of those things and you are still going to feel hungry and mentally you need to prepare for that. A lot of people don't prepare for that, they get caught out and they start craving late on and they think they're doing something wrong. Even if you do everything right, you are going to feel more hungry than normal. Sorry, that's the truth, it is what it is. If you want to look better than 98% of men, you have to be willing to do what 98% of men won't do. There has to be some sacrifice, especially if it's your first time getting to 15% body fat. The good news is that once you get there, maintenance is not as difficult. Things like hunger management, things like energy, and all these kind of things, your body will adapt to your new normal. One more point to add. I didn't want to add it to the six things because it kind of goes without saying, but you need to be consistent. You can be following the best program. You can have the best set of life circumstances. If you are not consistent with the six things that I mentioned, you are not going to make it over the line. A matter of fact, this is why the vast majority of people will never get there. I'm not saying you need to be 100% perfect all the time, but in the six areas that I listed, if you are going to get to 15% body fat, you are going to need to be about at least 80% consistent in those areas. And this is where I say coaching can be hugely beneficial because most people can be consistent for three to four weeks. We see it every year, dry January, new year, new me. They fall off in February, usually by Valentine's Day, because when the going gets tough and the rubber touches the road, most people give up. Having someone there to keep you accountable and keep you on track and call you out when you're slacking is a game changer. And that's why those who work with coaches tend to get higher chances of success. If you want more information on coaching, click the link in the description below for more information. But yeah, that's everything. Hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. I know it's a bit of a tough talk, but it's needed. As I said, 98% of people do not get there. So we need to get real. Comment below, let me know where you are on your journey and how you found getting to 15% body fat and your struggles or your wins. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to follow me on this journey and I'll see you again soon.